Okay, today we're going to look at some problems involving uh, continuity. Um, and we want to know here for our first problem is f of x equals 1 over x continuous at x equals 0. So remember, for continuity at a point, we have three conditions. One, um, f of, we'll call the value we're looking at c. Uh, does f of c exist? Does the limit as x approaches c exist? And then finally, f of c must equal the limit as x approaches c. So if those three conditions are met, then the function is continuous at a point. So for our first one, we know that if we substitute 0 into our function, we get 1 over 0. Uh, that's undefined, so we can say no, f of 0 does not exist. Um, and we can move on. Um, the limit doesn't exist either, but all it takes is 1 to fail. Here we have uh, a piecewise function, and so our first point, does f of c exist? Well, uh, we're worried about really at 1. Um, oh, we didn't finish that statement. Is this continuous at x equals um, negative 1? Sorry. Um, and so we see here that the function is defined at negative 1 to be 1. So we've checked off the first condition. Now we have to see, is this function continuous? Or uh, does the limit exist, rather? So what we'll do here is we'll, because we have a piecewise function, because we have an absolute value, we're going to rewrite this. And so we know um, that for values greater than 1, so we're going to have to actually write this into three pieces, uh, this would be x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 for values greater than 1. For values, or le negative 1, sorry. For values less than negative 1, if we were to substitute in, this would be negative. So we write this as the opposite of x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 for values less than negative 1. And then it equals 1 when x equals negative 1. So we see we now we have it in three pieces. And we've seen functions like this before, um, and simplifying this a little bit more, this would be 1 for x values greater than negative 1. This would simplify to negative 1 for x is less than negative 1. And then we have 1 when x equals negative 1. So if we were going to graph this, and let me put this on, of course, some graph paper here. Okay. So we have the function 1 when x equals negative 1. For x values greater than negative 1, it is also 1. So here we have the horizontal line. For values less than negative 1, it is negative 1. So we have an open circle there. And so while we see that the function value exists at 1, the limit does not because the limit as x approaches one, negative 1 from the right is 1. The limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left is negative 1. So here we would say no, because the limit as x approaches negative 1 of our g of x does not exist. So it fails our second condition. Okay, um, our next example, again, another piecewise function. Uh, we are going to want to simplify this. Um, so we see that in our this portion here, we have a difference of squares. So x minus 2 to, times x plus 2, provided x does not equal 2, and it's got 4 when x equals 2. Uh, and then this simplifies. These terms divide out. And we have x plus 2, provided x does not equal 2. And then we have 4 when x equals 2. All right, so looking at our first condition up here, does the function exist at 2? Well, yes. f of 2 equals 4. Okay, now we look at our next condition. Does the limit exist? So I'm going to just sketch a graph here. Um, and so when x does not equal 2, we have the line x plus 2. So that's a line with a positive 1 slope, y-intercept at 2. 
Um, it has a hole here, and there's our graph. So uh, this portion of the graph, the limit as x approaches 2 is equal to the limit uh, from the left and the right, and that happens to be at 4. So the limit as x approaches 2 of our function, um, this should have been an h, right? That's not an f, so we're going to change that to an h is equal to 4. And so we fill in that circle because of this portion here. So since the function value equals 4, the limit equals 4, we would say, yes, h of x continuous at x equals 2. Uh, okay, let's look at another example. Um, here again, we have a piecewise function. It's defined to be the absolute value of x. So I'm just going to jump into a graph here. When x does not equal 0, so our absolute value graph, our v-shaped, we'd have an open circle here at 0. Um, and then at 0, it has the y value 2. Okay, so as we go through our conditions, f of 0 equals 2, so that exists. Uh, the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, as we get closer to 0, the y values get closer to 0, which is the same as the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. So the limit exists. So the first two conditions are uh, true. The problem is our third one, f of 0, does not equal the limit as x approaches 0. So therefore not continuous at x equals 0. So again, the limit exists, the function value exists, but they're not the same. And then finally, we have another piecewise function. And the question is, uh, what values of A makes the function continuous? So again, we go through our steps. So this is how f of 1, so f of 1 is 3a minus 2, right? We substitute 1 for x. And now the limit as x approaches 1 from the left, which is defined to be ax squared, has to equal the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, which is 3ax minus 2. Okay, so now we're going to compute these two limits. So as we approach 1 from the left, 1 squared is 1. So we have, um, oh, there was a mistake here. My apologies. This was supposed to be a squared x, a squared x. So we have a squared times 1 equals... And then this limit as we approach 1 from the right, substituting 1 for x would be 3a minus 2. So notice we have a quadratic equation. Uh, to solve this, we're going to set it equal to 0. So subtract 3a um, and add 2. Um, and in factoring this, we have a and a minus 2 minus 1. Using our zero product property, we get a equals 2 and a equals 1. So it looks like we could have two values of a. So if I go back and substitute uh, 2 in for a, we'd have 4x for x is less than 1. And here, 2 times 3, we'd end up with 6x minus 2 for x greater than or equal to 1. So notice f of 1, if I substitute 1 here, I get 6 minus 2 is 4. And the limit as x approaches 1 from the left would be 4. Same with the right, so that works. Or if we substitute 1 in for a, 1 squared, so we end up with x for x less than 1. Substituting 1, a, 1 for a here, we end up with 3x minus 2. And again, notice if I substitute 1 in, do I get a function value? I do. I get 3 times 1 minus 2, which is 1. If I take the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side, using this portion, I get 1. And the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, I would also get 1. Uh, they're equal, and that equals the function value. So we end up with two values of a 
um, that make this function continuous. So again, the key is really here, what we're doing is we're setting our limit from the left equal to the limit from the right, finding those limits, and then solving that equation. Hope that helps, and we'll see you soon.